Hi, my name's Eric. I'm from California. I've been in the United Kingdom for six years. Yeah, you get a woo from California. Woo! Um, in 1993, I came out of the closet as America's first openly gay high school coach. And it went absolutely horrible. My teammates, I'm sorry, my teammates, my athletes loved me. They respected me. They said, Coach, you're a coach. It makes absolutely no difference to us. But my athletes started to develop harassment, discrimination, bullying, particularly by the American football teams, right? In 1995, two American football players tailed my athletes home, and a, I don't know stones very well, but I don't know, like an 18-stone guy knocked my 10-stone runner to the ground, sat on top of him, and beat him, and beat him, and beat him. He broke four of the kid's facial bones, tried to scratch his eyes out, and said it ain't over until the faggot's dead. Well, my athlete knew that he had to escape, and he did. And he escaped, and he found a wall, and he climbed the wall, and he ran home to his mom, and the mom called the police, and the police came over, and the Huntington Beach Police Department, OC, wrote it up as mutual combat. Not aggravated assault, not attempted murder, not even a hate crime. The, the principal of my high school came out the next day and said, this was simply a matter of boys being boys. And it was that notion, that ludicrous notion, that boys are just naturally prone to violence. That told me I couldn't be a high school teacher anymore. I had to give that up, go back, earn my PhD, study the section, the intersection of sport, men, and masculinities. And I've been doing this since 1998. My first major, re my first major research project was on 68 openly gay high school and university team sport athletes and individual sport athletes. These are football players, these are divers. And I expected to hear the stories, the horror stories that I went through. And I didn't. And this wasn't a selective sample. This was any athlete over a several year period that I could find and interview. And they were having good experiences on their teams. Some of them were having great experiences on their teams. Now don't get me wrong, these are athletes who chose to come out of the closet. But when they assessed the situation, and many of them didn't, many of them were out there. They were having good experiences. Well, I do a lot of research now, a whole lot of research on team sports. And I do ethnography. I get out there. I don't just interview them. I get out there. And if they play, I play. If they go drinking, I go drinking. I become one of them for a 10-day period so I can fully assess their life out, understand how they think, see how they interact with their friends. And I want to tell you some of the good news. Because in research study after research study, things are getting better. In fact, in some capacities, in some demographics, things are really damn good. I want to give a little bit of credit. For example, well, one of my graduate students, I, I can't do all this research alone, so I've got a, a posse of graduate students that helps me do it. One of my graduate students, Mark, raise your Mark. Mark in. He did, he did a two-year ethnography, a two-year ethnography of three different high schools and found that these were homophobia-free high schools. These were places where queer peers interacted with their heterosexual mates fluidly. These were places where at one Catholic college, they elected a 16-year-old gay boy to be their president. This is amazing stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that homophobia is dissipated to this capacity in all spaces or, or across all classes or races. These are mostly white middle class people, but they show that things are on the move. Collectively, I've done ethnographies on four soccer teams in the United States, two co-ed cheerleading teams in the United States, two rugby teams here in the United Kingdom, two football teams, that kind of football, here in the United Kingdom. I've done quantitative research of 255 incoming freshman athletes to the University of Bath, and out of 255 incoming athletes to the University of Bath, not one more that they would have a problem having an openly gay athlete on their team. This is exciting stuff. And as homophobia has decreased, not only allowing gay men to play, particularly at the university level, it's also helped straight men have more gender fluidity. What it means to be a heterosexual masculine guy today is softer and nicer and more inclusive than it's ever been. In fact, some of you may have seen in the media some research that I co-published co with, with Ian and Mark over here, that 89% of white 
of white men, period, 89% of white men at two universities and one sixth form, 89% of heterosexual men are now kissing each other on the lips and proudly posting these on Facebook. And the interviews with these men suggest that this is not a parody of gay men. They would be very upset if you called them homophobic. 50% of them kissed their gay mates the same way. Times are changing. But times aren't changing equally in all capacity. Please don't berate me for not having studied a particular community that you're interested in. That's the number one thing people do, question and answer time. How many studied these people? It's like, no, I literally worked 10 to 15 hours a day doing my research for the last decade. I published eight books and 25 articles in the last decade. And anybody who knows what it's like to publish an academic article, one article is the equivalent of doing a master's degree. I worked my butt off, but there's only so much you need to go around. But one thing that all of my observations really tells me, and one reason I'm so glad to see the launch of this program, is that where we need to change the attitudes principally is with the coaches and the administrators. It's the adults, the adults who are charged with looking out for the health and the safety of the youth, that's where the problem majority lies. Not all adults, but many. And let me give you a perfect example. We had a couple of years ago, last year actually, an openly bisexual rugby player at my university. He walked into the pub the first day of his first day on campus, and he walked into the, to the night space that all the students shared, and he found a guy, and he started making out with a guy. And not one of his rugby teammates had an issue with it in any capacity at all. There is no doubt that he was the most popular guy on his team. Well, I wrote an article about it. Published it on housesports.com. Some of you may have seen it. His teammates thought it was great. He thought it was great. Everybody thought it was great. Who didn't think it was great was administrators at my university who weren't so sure that it made the university look good. <laughs>